Mo moving away from music phones, there are people who actually use their phones these days as cameras. So uh, a, a, there are really good camera phones out there. Uh, phones which have like 8 megapixel sensors which can come up with like a really good image quality. So uh, while choosing a camera phone, you want to have the, the megapixel number doesn't matter, honestly. Because uh, if you, you have to look at the image quality, the, how it looks on the phone screen and also how it looks on your PC once you transfer them. So uh, pay more attention to the image quality more, more so than the megapixel rating. Okay, uh, other than the megapixel rating and the image quality, you also want to look at uh, other camera specific features like autofocus, uh, smile detection. Uh, Xenon flash or a uh, dual LED flash. Uh, uh, there are phones that have automatic face recognition. So um, you probably want to have a look at those if you are pro camera uh, phone types. Also uh, many camera phones uh, these days have uh, features that allow you to edit the photographs on the go. Uh, probably change, uh, tweak the white balance, con contrast and use a lot of effects like uh, grayscale, sepia and stuff like that. Lastly, remember that uh, camera, a camera phone is never probably going to give you as good a image quality as a standalone camera. So that's a little sacrifice that you'll have to make but in turn you get two devices in one. There are uh, phones that can do good music, there are phones that can do good camera. Now we have phones that can do both really well. So if you want like an all-rounder good entertainment phone, you should look for the stuff that I said before. Other than that, keeping in mind that all these uh, extra activities are going to really impact your battery life. So you want to see if all these all-rounder phones have decent battery rating and that it can, they can last long. Another thing that phones can do these days is uh, uh, navigation. You have phones with GPS chips built in them and with the use of third party navigation software you can actually use it as a full-fledged navigation device. So that could be a really good feature if you're bad with directions. We're also seeing a big uh, demand for all touch screen phones these days in the market. Everybody is going crazy over touch. So uh, what you need to look at is uh, touch displays initially were meant to be operated with a stylus. For example, a phone like this uh, has a resistive touch screen display. And phones that have available now have a capacitive type of display, which is more optimized to be used with the fingers. So you want to decide if you want to use the phone with a stylus. So if you are lo looking to use a phone with a stylus, you probably want to go for a phone with a resistive screen. So the uh, main advantage of uh, large touch screen phones is that you have more viewable area than what would probably be used up by a keyboard. So these phones are actually good to serve the internet or probably watch videos at a pretty decent resolution. So many of the touch phones have an accelerometer that can automatically rotate the user interface according to the way you hold the phone. So this is a pretty cool feature to have. For people who want to really serve the internet on the phone, um, you want to look at a screen that's bigger than what the average phones can give you. Well, we can't give you an exact figure, but obviously bigger is obviously going to be better. Okay, the same applies for uh, alphanumeric keypads. The, you want to look at uh, the spacing and the tactility that the keyboard provides. Many of the keyboards that we have today are, uh, you know, deeply recessed into the body. So they're kind of not very easy to type on. So you probably want to have a look at that. Uh, fashion influences a lot of uh, the youth's buying decision these days. 
So uh, if a phone, you should probably look at a phone which suits your personality, which suits your style, which uh, a phone basically could speak a lot about who you actually are for some people. Uh, some people might prefer a more utilitarian, simple business looking phone or some people might actually prefer something that's as cool as this. We have with us the Samsung Jet S8000 phone. It's Samsung's uh, newest uh, touchscreen phone with a 8, uh, 800MHz uh, processor. So let's look at what's there in the box. So we have the phone here. So let's power it on. Till then we can look at what's there in the box. So we get the USB cable and we have the charger. Other than that we have the standard warranty card and user manual in multiple languages. You have the PC studio suit, Samsung. Uh, let's look at the phone. Phone the OS is Samsung's own. You have a hexagon menu button dedicated right here. You have the widget bar. In the menu you have uh, three screens. What we found that this player, this phone was able to play DivX videos directly without any sort of conversion. So that's pretty interesting. So while we play with the phone, you guys can check out the detailed review in the magazine and visit thingdigit.com for more information.